administration has also taken the most aggressive action in modern history to protect Americans from the coronavirus. You know about this whole thing. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. I am officially declaring a national emergency. We have just heard from President Trump at the White House saying that Americans should be prepared for more than 100,000 deaths. The United States has become the first country in the world to record more than 2,000 coronavirus deaths in a single day. New York State alone now has more confirmed cases than any single country in the world on what's been a very difficult 24 hours for the United States. The United States has seen the deadliest day of uh, coronavirus um, attacks or deaths, if you like, that any country has seen so far. More than 2,000 people died of the virus today. It will go away, just stay calm. It will go away. We want to protect our shipping industry, our crews. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. 917 deaths in the UK is considerable and we know that the actual figure is likely to be much much higher because this does not take into account the number of people who are dying in the community. Look at the figures from the start of April, from the 2nd of April, the number of deaths was doubling every three days. Now France emerging as the new hot zone in Europe, reporting its deadliest 48 hours and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson revealing after he tested positive for the virus, his pregnant girlfriend now has symptoms of her own. Tonight, the horrifying death toll in France, more than a thousand dead in the past 48 hours. Spain reporting more than 800 deaths in one day. These grim images out of Barcelona, showing dozens of empty coffins filling up a parking garage. The government expects the peak of the pandemic around Easter. Prime Minister Boris Johnson announcing he is remaining in isolation more than a week after testing positive. Italy now has the most COVID-19 infections. Infection rates continue to soar. Thousands of new cases have been recorded over the past several days. It's a tsunami, said one doctor at an intensive care unit in northern Italy. After Italy, Spain has the second highest number of infections in Europe. It is under a nationwide lockdown for at least two weeks. People are barred from leaving their home unless they need food, medicine or to go to work, if they can't do so remotely. The French president has also ordered people in his country to stay home for 15 days, saying any violators will be punished. Germany currently has the third highest number of coronavirus infections in Europe. All non-essential shops, bars, religious facilities and sporting venues have been ordered closed, with no time frame on when to reopen. German citizens have also been asked to refrain from travelling abroad because of the risk they may not be able to return. Without drastic action, cases could double every five or six days. A sea of people amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Hundreds and thousands of migrants desperate to reach their homes in rural India. And women and children have walked for many miles, crossing state after state in a lockdown. There is no social distancing or protection for these poor daily wage earners. The virus has a potential to spread like wildfire here. More than a week after their Prime Minister told them to go home and stay put, many of India's poorest have still not completed the journey because they're having to walk. At times, the Indian police have looked heavy-handed. Here, one group of migrants' long walk is interrupted by a dousing of disinfectant. Elsewhere, those deemed transgressors have been beaten in an effort to clear the streets. Street vendors also live hand to mouth, but the police have turned on some of them and their wares. These are fruit and veg sellers in Gujarat. More than a week into the quarantine, the state is now handing out food as the world's biggest lockdown triggers need on a monumental scale.
The president's admission did little to calm the anger here. And as the frustration boils over inside, the medics are facing an existential crisis. Seven nurses have already died and 147 are infected. Medical professionals in Indonesia have expressed concern that COVID-19 cases are either being underreported or going undetected. On March 14th, the spokesman for Indonesia's COVID-19 task force said, we are now treating this as an unnatural national disaster. But activists in the country worry about the millions of Indonesians living in poverty who would be the worst affected. Not only do the poor lack access to health care, clean water and nutritious food, but activists say many of them will continue to work even if they are sick, just to make ends meet. It is now clear that no country is immune from the disease or will be spared its severe impact. Health experts say although many African nations identified gaps in their public health systems during the Ebola epidemic from 2014 to 2016, few have done enough to prepare for a threat like COVID-19. Like Africa, many Latin American countries are already facing other epidemics including measles and dengue. Venezuela seems particularly unprepared for the coronavirus outbreak as years of political turmoil have left its economy in ruins and many doctors and nurses have left the country. More and more countries are confirming COVID-19 infections, but healthcare professionals say that those numbers are often limited by the scope of testing. Whether it be a lack of funding or public awareness, there are potentially many more infected people who haven't been diagnosed. YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.